Hi students, this video tutorial is about how to implement uh, Google sign-in right so uh, I'm going to show you the end product so this is the page right so you will have some generic content here so the user is presented with the sign-in with Google so when the user click on it so there will be one sign-in dialog so the user put in the <coughs> a valid uh, Gmail account so click next okay and then the password okay so if the credential is legitimate then uh, you will show the user picture you will show the username of that user and there's a logout so at this point of time uh, because this is a web api architecture so at this point of time uh, there is also a token being being stored in the browser right so this is the token and then uh, when the user click logout so what will happen is that uh, the token Okay, the very same token is now destroyed. Okay, no longer there, and the user will still uh, the user will see the sign in. Okay, so it's a different uh, picture because now the user uh, because previously he has signed in, right? So the username is still there, but uh, the user will need to. So at this point, the user is signed out. So if the user want to sign in again, then the user need to press on it. Uh, he can choose another account or the user can click on sign in. Alright, and at this point, uh, what is going to happen is the token will now be created okay, and will persist. Alright, so this is the end product. So let's talk about theory so that you can understand what's going under the hood. <coughs> Alright, so Okay, so, so this is what happened when the user click on sign in, then the di dialog will appear, and then uh, when the user successfully sign in, what will happen is that uh, the server from Google, once it detected that it's a correct uh, credential that is being provided, then the user is going to uh, or rather Google server is going to send a token okay to your web client so this is the token all right and then uh, what we will do is we will take the token we will we will create a local storage element with this this value here this jumble up data so basically this jumble up data is a uh, it's not really encryption it is like a hashing of the given name family name user picture url and also the user email so it's a hash of all this data here all right so in order to get back the given name family name user picture and user email then you need to pass this token onto a parser function okay so that you will know how to decipher this and it will give you all this four information so with all these four information then what you can do is uh, you will then so called you can hide this button now and you can show the user name all right and then you can show the user picture okay and you should also provide a logout all right then if the user click on the logout then what you should do is you should okay you should then uh, destroy away the token okay so that it is not in your browser anymore and then you can uh, hide away this information and you can show the user sign in button 
Alright, so this is what we are going to do for this particular video tutorial. And to add on, the importance of having this local storage written in your browser is paramount because it is the existence of this token that we can determine whether has the user signed or not. Alright, so uh, so the the logic is like this. Okay, when we refresh the web page, okay, if the token is there and the token will continue to persist, so if the token is there, then we can assume that the user has signed in. So we can take the token, pass, okay, send it to the parser function, okay, and then we can show the user. We can show the user, uh, so called the name and the image, right? So even if the user press refresh, this whole thing will just repeat because the token is persistent. So if the user press refresh and your JavaScript will check that the, the token is still is still there, it will still do the same thing and you will still present the same thing, right? So if the user has logged out. So remember I said that when the user log out so when the user log out we should remove the token. Okay, that means delete the token from the browser storage. So if the user press refresh at this point of time, right, then your JavaScript detected that there's no token. And if there's no token token, we assume that the user has already sign out or never sign in then we will not be uh, so called doing all this passing and we will then show the the correct sign in button all right so therefore uh, this this token here uh, that we are going to write into the local storage uh, play an important role so in fact uh, for any web api architecture for a web client uh, the it, it is very important to always uh, make use of the local storage to store your token because the token is an evidence that you have signed in and therefore uh, you have the token all right so now we want to move on to the uh, practical okay so before we jump into the javascript coding so we need to set up a google project to facilitate the google sign in so uh, what you can do is you can log into your Gmail, then you can open a new tab, and then you can navigate to console.cloud.google.com. Alright, so I'm going to start a blank, uh, a blank new project. And alright, so, so go for a new project. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, dbev1, alright, I think this is, I think we can ignore this, so create, okay, so uh, we are done, so what we want is, we want to go into the project settings. Uh, no, not here. Let me just go back again. Okay, I think we can click on. So dbev1. Alright. So what we want is we want to go into the Okay, uh, getting started. Suddenly, I cannot find the link. Okay, let's 
go to home uh, API overview okay let's try yeah okay so we want to go come to this screen here API overview alright so uh, basically what we need to do is we want to set up credentials okay to allow uh, to allow your app to be able to use Google sign in okay so you can see here that uh, it says that we must remember to configure OAuth consent screen alright so we need to do this one first uh, which is over here so we can click on this button here okay so there are two types one is internal so internal basically is for users within your organization okay uh, we don't belong to this so we belong to external okay but for external uh, ours will only be in testing mode so if you want it to be uh, so-called push to production then you will need to submit your app for Google verification all right so we will we will only be in the testing mode so so uh, click on create okay so basically uh, now what we want is yeah so you can see the diagram here okay so here will shows the dialog after the user click sign in uh, right so maybe we put dbev all right so dbev wants to access your google account then uh, okay you supply any email all right okay and then and then uh, you may want to supply an image okay okay next is uh, because over here right over here in the dialog the user have a chance to visit your home page okay so for me I will just put uh, okay maybe I put facebook.com okay so this one uh, this will be your home page URL is for the user is additional information for the user so you should also put a link for the privacy okay like uh, you know the data you collected uh, it's only used for specific purposes and blah 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 okay and also there must be a proper URL to service link okay so for now we just put the Facebook uh, home page okay and we need to add this domain okay so that uh, okay so that this domain is authorized facebook.com okay and then uh, you should put in a valid email okay Okay, I'm going to use back the same email here okay then you save and continue all right so we have configured the off screen right now we can go and uh, set up the credentials okay so what we want is to create credentials the OAuth 2.0 so this is the one Okay, request user content so that your app can access the user's data. Okay, so uh, our Google sign in is going to be hosted inside a web client. Okay, so it falls under web application. So if you are Google, if you are using Google sign in on your Android app, then you will choose this one. Uh, iOS, if you are uh, using uh, creating a Windows uh, Windows 10 application then you will use this one alright so ours is web application so this is just uh, displaying internally so not important yeah so this part is extremely important so we are doing testing now right we are running local host okay so we should be putting local host 8080 and also localhost okay so make sure you include these two entries ok 
Okay, we won't be using this one because our Google sign-in is basically our web client uh, facilitating the Google sign-in. Okay, so, but if you are doing some redirect from your web server, that means from your Node.js, then you can do this. Okay, so we'll just do, okay. So basically, this is sufficient. So press create. Okay, you may want to download your client ID and your client secret, although we will, we will only be using the client ID. Okay, so this is the client ID. So anyway, we download the JSON. Right, so let me just copy this one, the client. Right, so this client ID is very important. Okay, so now next we'll move on to the JavaScript coding. Okay, so this is the movie review website. So I'm going to create one separate HTML so that it's cleaner for me to demonstrate. So I'm going to call this google.html. All right, and I'm going to just create one boilerplate. Save it, and then uh, I'll just refresh. Right, so this is the HTML. Okay, next is uh, I'm going to link to this library here okay so this is the JavaScript library that's provided by Google so that it can facilitate the web page to do the Google sign-in uh, next I'm going to put in Okay, I'm going to put in okay a div here, right? Floating, so this div will be going to the right. Okay, one. Okay, a div here, and then okay, write some JavaScript. Okay, so basically this JavaScript it will be window dot on load will be equals to function. That means when the web page is loaded, all right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy. Copy this line here. Okay, alternate shift F. Okay, so I'm going to use the so called the client ID that I set up just now. So this is the client ID. And then, uh, yeah, so you can see here that. Uh, when when the web page is loaded, it will trigger this function, and it is going to set this one up, okay, to show the Google sign in. You can see the ID here. All right, and then uh, if the user press on it, so this JavaScript will have all the API to do uh, to do all the needed things, including showing the dialog. And if the user sign in correctly, then it's going to call this function, okay, which we don't have yet. So we can render and see, uh, okay, see the process. Okay, so refresh it. Oh, okay. So so we need to have this function first. So we would need to have that function. All right, so this is a function. So let's take a look again. Let's refresh it. Right, so we have one all the way to the right because we have a, a styling to float right. Okay, so this part here will do the styling for you according to the Google look and feel. Then when I press it, Okay, you can see the pop-up, right? Uh, the dialog. So I'm going to 
sign in with a valid email and then I'm going to just provide the correct password okay so if you remember the OAuth screen right so this is the name right the name that we use this is the link you can see it's linking to Facebook right Facebook this the uh, privacy page this is the term of service right and then uh, if I click on confirm okay if I click on confirm then it is going to call that function okay but there's nothing in my function yet so I will not do that I'll just close it okay next is I'm going to just console.log to show you here right so if I sign in correctly the token will come inside here and uh, it will be a JSON object and one of the attribute is credential so this is the the very long string of data which I was tell here okay I was telling you this is a hash of uh, the username the family name given name user picture and whatever okay let's go back so I'm going to okay refresh again okay sign in okay confirm okay so you can see this is the the hash all right okay so this is a hash and then if I go to like JWT token decoder okay if I go to this website for example this one okay let me copy this one huh? copy this okay so you can you can paste it in right you can paste it in so these are the information that is inside this uh, hash, this encoded string. So you can see uh, the user email, right? The name, the URL to the picture, the given name, the the family name. Okay, yeah. So you can so right. So the next thing is we want to use a particular JavaScript library such as this one. Uh, to decipher all this information okay so the one that we will be using is is a CDN for convenient so it's this particular URL JW, JWT decode alright so Okay, so now if I were to okay, I would say va res uh, va user data will be equals to jwt underscore the code uh, respond dot credential okay then I will console dot log okay I will console dot log uh, respond dot name okay so name is one of them okay as you can see right so name is one of them you can see here Okay, I will just do a few more. Respond dot name, respond dot uh, username, response dot picture. Okay, so let's try out. Refresh. Okay, sign in again. Right, so uh, I should be getting the data. So let me just check why am I not 
uh, okay so this one should be user data refresh okay yeah so you can see the name okay something is wrong with the second one this is a URL okay so you can see this URL here so let's look at the second one uh, username okay I think it's uh, probably there, there isn't a username let's, let's take a look so there's email there's name there's picture there's given name there's family name yeah so probably uh, maybe we should use given underscore name so there isn't a username okay so given underscore so let's try again refresh sign in yeah okay so this is the full name the given name the url okay great so after the user has signed in right uh, what we want to do is we want to we want to create a local storage okay so over here we want to put local storage dot set item okay the key will be token and then we are going to store the okay the hash all right yeah okay so let's go to here right you can see now there's no local storage so let's refresh it when we sign in right so we are creating one key and the value is this very long string okay so good okay so now what we want to do is uh, we want to Okay, let me just paste some HTML here. Okay, basically, uh, I have a div. This div is floating to the right, and then I have an image here. The username is user pick. I have a span here. All right, and then I have a hyperlink here. Okay, so the idea is that when the user is signed in, then what I want to do is I want to make this one invisible and I want to show this one. So, it, so you can see that uh, this one, this whole D at the onset is invisible, right? So you can see that I only see this button, okay? I don't see that D. So now uh, I'm going to write some JavaScript here. Okay. All right. So when if the window on load, okay, if the window is loaded, and then I'm going to say that uh, let token be equals to local storage dot get item token okay so if okay because we know that local storage is persistent right so if the if the if that token is there then this guy this variable will have some value okay so I'm gonna say if token is equal equals to undefined It will be this whole thing here okay so so token if the token is there then this one will not run correct because the token is there it is not undefined so I will run the else okay so for the else what I want to do is uh, I want to okay I want to decode J 
jwt okay i want to decode the token okay and then uh, document get element by id Okay, so we will just do the okay so basically if the token is there then I want to hide this one I want to un I want to make this one visible right so I'm going to okay I'm going to say that this one lock lock dot uh, dot display will be equals to block okay so meaning is visible then the other one the other one will be making this one invisible right login none okay so before I press refresh because the token is there so it is going to it is going to trigger this part all right it's going to trigger this part so let's take a look refresh so indeed right the button become invisible and now uh, my name is here and there's a logout right but pressing this one has no effect so now i'm going to call a function right so on click Log out. Okay, so so before we do the logout, maybe we should uh, just fill up the user picture, right? So so it will be user pick user pick. So dot src equals to user data dot picture. All right. So let's take a look again. The picture should show up. Yeah. Okay. So the picture should show up. So when I press a logout, so essentially what I want to do is to uh, destroy the token. Okay. So logout. So let's create a function. Logout. Okay, and uh, what do I want to do here is I want to remove the local storage and then uh, I want to maybe just so called navigate to myself again so this one is like causing a page refresh all right so let's take a look so refresh right so refresh it will always show this one the moment i log out okay the moment i log out you can see the token is missing and I, when i refresh again because the token is missing it will always run this one okay you will not run this one because the token is undefined so you will always run this one okay so now when i sign in again okay so when i sign again uh yeah so it's calling this function so what I should be doing is I should be also copying all this okay copying all this to pull it here
Okay, so I don't need all this anymore. Okay, let's try again. So refresh. Alright, so log out. So sign in again. Sign in. Okay, refresh. It's still correct. It's still correct. Log out. Okay, so if the if the user log out of Gmail completely, right? So here will okay the display will be something like that. All right, so sign in. Okay, refresh. Okay, everything looks good. Log out. Okay, so refresh. Sign in. Alright, so you can see the importance of the token. Okay, and in the web API architecture, it is the token that, uh, that you will use your JavaScript code to check whether uh, is the user sign in or not so that is the the importance of the token all right so thank you for watching this video tutorial